Hello, everyone. Welcome to the, our second online Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. For over 30 years, Hadley Mothers Club has sponsored Candidates Night as a service to the town of Hadley. I am Denise Devine, the president of the Hadley Mothers Club. I will be moderating tonight. We would first like to remind all the voters in Hadley that the election will be held at the Hadley Senior Center on April 13th from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. The ballot and the warrant will be, it's on the meeting calendar online at the town of Hadley online. Or you can see it at the town hall, the post office, or the Hadley Safety Complex. Our candidates will adhere to rules sent to them when they agree to participate. We will go in order as listed on the ballot. Questions will be asked after each, after, after all the candidates have had their opening statements. Let's begin with the opening statements. The first office that will be represented is the select board. There are two candidates running for two spots. The first is Joyce Chungalo. This is my, uh, I mean, I have been 33 years total uh, in service for the town of Hadley. I've had 15 years on the school committee. I have 18 years on the select board. So this is uh, quite unusual to be doing this on the Zoom time. But again, we are not in normal conditions yet. So um, let's move forward. I don't think I have enough time in all of the time allowed to me to tell you what has been going on in the last 33 years of my service to the town of Hadley. But the last 18 years have been uh, on the select board. The most important things in my life have been my family and my friends and the support and care that they have given me over all of this time. My number two is my work as a nurse. I have been at Cooley Dickinson and working in their system for the past 50 years and being able to care and, uh, of the people I know and others in their family. The third important thing for me is being able to serve the people of Hadley. This gives me great joy and satisfaction. It also goes with my life in taking care of people. And the number one, fourth thing, maybe should have been my first thing, is God in helping to me make the right decisions that I need to make uh, to take care of the people of Hadley. So I'm just gonna go with the last three years that have we have been working uh, our time has been quite consumed with the North Hadley Fire Station, the Senior Center, and the library. It's taken up a great deal of our time to get all of these projects done. And I can say that we are now have finished products and we are very proud of the buildings that we have put up. This past year uh, has been none like other. We have now the COVID-19 I have never experienced anything like this in the 54 years of my nursing career. And it certainly has put different constraints on the town and how we've had to do things. We have great emergency management, board of health, everybody in the town has tried to work together to make it a safe place for all of us in this town. The future of our buildings, so I can honestly say I'll move forward and uh, look to see what, um, we will need to do for the future and is taking care of our buildings, the new ones that we've made, the old ones and what we're going to do with them. The North Hadley Hall has really been a thorn in my side for the past 15 years. We really should have gotten rid of it. Maybe on this last leg, we'll get it done. Open space in this town has been a most important factor for farming and agriculture. Taxes, we've been after 33 years in town, I think we have been steady at keeping a low tax rate for everybody. 
And that's been because we've kept Route 9 as our business district. And it's been quite um, a positive thing for us to have done this. Our infrastructure and our water and sewer um, are going to need a great deal of uh, taking care of over the next few years. Uh, public safety, over the years we have uh, put a lot of effort into the police and fire. Uh, the police department, we have expanded on uh, our structure of fire chief, lieutenant, adding sergeants for all shifts. Uh, we've now added back in our canine service and that will be coming available. Uh, the ambulance uh, has been a, a really important factor for me over the past few years. And that's where I have been, you know, putting most of my time and effort into because that's been what I have done. I am, have been the public safety liaison for a number of years now. I have been even on the first committee, uh, an ambulance when I was on school committee to see what we were going to do for our ambulance service. Uh, we have changed in our, how we have gone and we did put out an RFP process when did we decided to look into a private service to Hadley. We now have Action Ambulance, which has made a big difference in the amount of time and the response time that we now can serve our people of Hadley. The response time has been really quite uh, different than what it was before. That's time. Thank you. So um, we're ready for Amy Parsons as our next candidate for select board. Uh, my name is Amy Parsons. I actually ran last year. Uh, I'm a Hadley native. I went to Hopkins Academy and I went through the um, school system here. I didn't write a fancy speech. I'd rather just give you guys me as I am. Um, after I graduated from Hopkins Academy, where I was part of Promerito Honor Society, I was in band, chorus, and played varsity soccer and basketball. Um, I was also really involved in the First Congregational Church of Hadley when I was growing up. I sang in the choir, um, and I participated in Vacation Bible School, and then I became a music teacher for one semester or one summer there. Um, I then went on to Kansas State University, where I got my Bachelor's of Science in Agricultural Business, which is something that's very near and dear to my heart, as I am a 13th generation farmer um, here in Hadley. I started my career, which is a $23 billion company. I started in auto area, and then I was promoted out to a job in Minnesota, where I was there for seven years. And I really thought, you know, before coming to do this tonight, I really thought about my why. And in all the places I lived, Kansas, Colorado, Minnesota, Australia for a semester, Hadley has always been my primary residence, my permanent address. So when I came back here in 2017, I really thought about ways that I could become more involved in the community. This will be my first act as a public servant for the town of Hadley as an adult. And there is nothing that I am more excited about because my generation and our children will be the future of Hadley. Some of the things that are really important to me, especially coming through COVID-19 um, and all of the expenditures of the previous years is fiscal responsibility. That's something that's gonna maintain Hadley and continue its prosperity. Um, <clears throat> maintaining infrastructure is also something that's very important to us in the survival of Hadley and our future. Um, and then also with COVID-19, I know it's been a very interesting and constricting time for many of us. So health and safety is absolutely important to me. Um, so I am completely excited to be a public servant of this town and I am excited to work with the school board, the planning board, the library board, just every board that there is, because I want to completely submerse myself in Hadley as Hadley is my future and I am its future. Thank you. We now have uh, the, the Board of Health, and this is uh, Margaret is up right now. So here she is. I, hold on, I just want to make sure I have my timer ready. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. 
Thank you. Thank you, Denise. And thank you to the Mothers Club for allowing me to speak today about why I am running for the Board of Health. And I'd like to give you some background information about who I am. Uh, I was born and raised in Springfield, where I still have family. Uh, I have lived in the Upper Valley for over 20 years. And my spouse, Devorah Jacobson, and I moved to Hadley about three years ago. I graduated from the master's program at UMass as a family nurse practitioner, and I've worked in healthcare for almost 30 years. As a nurse practitioner, I saw patients in addition to starting and directing our quality assurance department where I oversaw five physician practices. Um, and essentially my role there was to develop a comprehensive database to measure how well we were meeting national standards of care, you know, just to ensure that our patients were receiving you know, the best standard of care in the management of their chronic illnesses. And additionally, I was a member of our hospital's joint committee to develop what is known as the patient-centered medical home model. And here I worked with other physician leaders in the community on ways to better improve uh, the quality of care, especially for those patients who tended to use maybe the ER as their primary source of care. But essentially all of this experience really sharpened my understanding that the best solution to health problems lies in prevention. And in essence, this is the function of a board of health in a town like ours. Today, we take our local boards of health, I think for granted, but really without their oversight and their commitment to protect us, their citizens, rather than say protecting the interest of a business owner, uh, we can feel safe in the knowledge that our eating establishments, our drinking water, and our houses adhere to basic sanitary standards. As a write-in candidate to the Board of Health, I would be taking the place of Ms. Emma Dragon, who's a nurse who has chosen not to run again. She's very busy in the work that she's doing as well in Amherst. Um, Emma Dragon, along with uh, Dr. Susan Mosler and Mr. Greg Mish have worked incredibly hard during these extraordinary times dealing with the pandemic. In addition to doing the myriad other tasks that are required um, in, in, in public health. Like them, I commit to working on behalf of our residents and our businesses to ensure the health and safety for our community through, through decisions that are strongly rooted in evidence-based health practices. And I hope that you will give me the opportunity to work on your behalf for the town of Hadley come um, April 13th when it's time to vote. Thank you very much. So the next um, office will be school committee. Um, I just wanted to do one little quick little um, advertisement for the Mothers Club. We are doing a recycling day officially on May 15th um, at the Halley Elementary School. Uh, visit our website and also we'll have signs all around town about the time it is. And on the website, you'll see a listing of um, the items we'll take and the fees that we will charge, but we're excited to actually have an event in May. So without further ado, we are going to uh, introduce uh, candidates for school committee. Um, there are uh, two candidates and there are two positions that are open. So Humera is the first and I will introduce her and let her get going. Thank you, Denise, and thank you for the Mothers Club for hosting this. When I first ran for school committee in 2012, I had just broken 40 years of age. I had three young kids, four, six, and 10. I worked for a little nonprofit, helping colleges around the nation adapt because technology and innovation was changing the nature of the workforce. I didn't know anything about K-12 education, but I knew the future was gonna look very different and I'd be doing Hadley a disservice if I didn't volunteer to help all kids in the community prepare. I promised three things, eliminate strife, technology, enhance technology, and get our unfair share of grant dollars. Strife. I had never attended a school committee meeting, but when I began to read and attend a few meetings before my run, I learned that there was bitter discord among the key leaders. I promised a different era, one that would value shared perspectives, listening deeply to others, finding consensus, and sometimes agreeing to disagree. 
but always with civility in our approach, kindness in our heart, and a dogged pursuit of the betterment of education for all children. I would say that I was helped to deliver on that promise, working with very sensible early colleagues like Roby Grant, Linda Dunlavy, and Molly Keegan. Taking down the temperature a notch invited other individuals who might not have run for office or start an annual 5K race or join volunteer initiatives to improve our schools. We attracted a superintendent who modeled these principles, Annie McKenzie. She stood for these values and created a positive school culture amongst educators, parents, and students. Two, technology. When I started, the elementary school had a computer lab filled with six-year-old desktop towers manufactured in 2006. Students would get a visit to the lab once or twice a week to learn how to type in a Word document or play a computer game. My first year, I championed a massive warrant upgrade with Chromebooks, 30 to a cart, that would be wheeled to a room and support teachers willing to do more. We added smart boards, iPads for younger children, skilled educators who would work with the teachers that were willing to learn how best to integrate computing into the classroom. We said it was ambitious, but let's aim for one-to-one -one computing, one where the district could give every child a laptop for use for schoolwork. And we never in our wildest dreams imagined that a pandemic would necessitate every child working remotely. But as a result of these actions and the town's generous funding, we could jump into action providing remote education as early as March, 2020. I searched today and found some amazing, funny, engaging videos from Josh Driver as early as March 17th, months before some schools knew what hit them. On the grant side, in Annie, we found a superintendent willing to be transparent to work with professional business managers who worked with the tri board, select board finance team so we could plan ahead for capital expenses, no surprises. Finally, I knew there was quite a bit of money out there for schools that aspired to do better. And I can't take full credit for Annie's efforts, but I'd like to think that our leadership on the school committee urged her to think big and inspire her team to work alongside us and land funding like Innovation Pathways, early college, STEM, and other initiatives. Now, nine years later, I've broken 50. I hate to admit that, but I have. All three of my kiddos are at Hopkins. I have some gray hairs. I now work for Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. I have since 2015 as a remote employee. And I know a lot more about K-12 issues. And since last March, we've had an exorbitant responsibility balancing the health and well-being of our educators, students, and community members, develop our educators' competencies in teaching remotely, reopen responsibly while advocating for greater testing. I passed, helped pass a testing resolution which helped land a statewide program. Faster vaccination, a resolution that allowed educators to be bumped up faster for uh, vaccination. And the pandemic lay bare the inequities in health outcome and the racial divide. Our town was not immune to that ugliness. Research shows children see color as early as four and five years of age. Colorblindness is not a thing. When we send our children off into the world, having never discussed issues of race, we send them off ill-equipped to succeed in their careers. Last summer, I proposed a racism resolution that has empowered school leaders to examine our current practices and work to make our very diverse school community more equitable and inclusive. And I work with parents and community members to explore these themes through a grassroots volunteer book club called Hadley Learns. So our landscape will continue to change and evolve and we must prepare our students to navigate an ever ambiguous world so that they can communicate with their peers with civility and open-mindedness and so they can go on to help to solve some of society's greatest challenges. Thank you. Our next candidate for school committee is Paul Pfeiffer. Thanks, Denise. Thanks to the Hadley Mothers Club. I'm Paul Pfeiffer. I'm running for a third term um, and uh, I've been with the school committee now six years. I just want to give a shout out to Humera, who's done a wonderful job on the school committee. And that's one of the great things about the school committee, uh, I think, you get a, a good array of highly devoted uh, parents. My oldest, Addison, is graduating this year, so some have questioned why I've decided to run again. And whereas Humera did a great job explaining some of the things she's focused on, one of the things I've really taken to heart are capital projects for the, the schools. So some of the things I've worked on over my last six years and led the efforts on uh, 
a big effort to bring in air conditioning to the elementary school. Believe it or not, there wasn't air conditioner. So working with the town, we raised the funds. It was a, almost a $600,000 project. Recently, we redid the driveway from Middle Street to Hopkins, which was uh, in much disrepair. We got that done working with the town. We brought into the schools um, refillable water fountains and, and um, filtered water fountains. But probably the thing I'm most proud of is the Hopkins Athletic Field Project, something that had been on the books for since 2009 and, and really hadn't gotten past a, a basic design. We got their new designs done and this uh, next month it's going to be completed. About an $800,000 project, first phase. If you haven't been out there in Hopkins Fields, you should see it. We've put in an asphalt pathway that's uh, three quarters of a mile that the public can use. Every time I go out there, I see folks walking on it. So it's a great public resource. So one of the reasons I really want to stay on the school committee for another three years is there's a second phase to that project that I'd really like to see be completed. And I think we've just got such a wonderful community here with such great, fabulous teachers. It's been really beneficial for my children uh, that I think maintaining the structures that they have, just the foundations, uh, is going to be important. And one of the things, too, as you may not know, that, that uh, is so important to Hadley as well is not just the local children, but we've become uh, a very attractive school for school choice kids from the surrounding communities. We have such a great uh, product to give in our small schools with the dedicated teachers and the great communities and the great facilities. So I really wanna see that, that project through and wanna keep staying on to um, help the school uh, be successful as we emerge out of COVID, which I know we will. And we've been frankly quite a leader in that regionally, right? We've been the school probably really the only school regionally that's been as open as we have and have done so safely. It's something to be very proud of. And that, that really takes a community, not just the teachers and the administration. The select board has just been wonderful. And I should say that same thing too with the, the athletic fields, all these projects really have been come from the town, the select board, the Community Preservation Act, the Conservation Commission, everybody chipping in the trustees uh, for Hopkins, everybody chipping in, chipping in to make this project, these projects successful. So that really just emboldens me to continue doing my part and participating. So thank you. And thanks again to the Mother's Club. Thank you, Paul. Um, and we'll be starting with the um, library trustee uh, position, but right now I just wanted to do another public service announcement from Headley Mother's Club. We are, uh, Hadley Mother's Club Holiday Fair is usually the Saturday before Thanksgiving. It's on hold right now. Please check our website as our club decides along with local and state Board of Health if this event can happen this fall. We're gonna be weighing a lot of different factors um, involving um, having that um, event this year, but um, please check out our website and uh, we'll have some more information on there about if we will have that event in November. And without further ado, we will bring on the two um, positions are open for library trustee. And Allison is up first. Thank you, Denise. Thank you to the Mother's Club for sponsoring this. I'm Allison Donta Vindman, and I am one of your two candidates for uh, Hadley Public Library Trustee. I'm a candidate for re-election. I have been a trustee for nine years. I originally moved to the Valley uh, to do graduate work at UMass School of Public Health, and I've lived in Hadley for 10 years. I have kids in the public school, have done volunteer work elsewhere in the community, including uh, leading our ninth grade Girl Scout troop. I was the chair of our building committee. I know that Joyce mentions our new buildings in town. Um, so I was one of the folks responsible for building the new library, including securing a $3.9 million grant from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, which enabled us to build the building at only a 47% cost to the town, uh, which I thought was a really um, a great contribution that took an entire community, Paul mentioned, uh, his capital um, projects at, at the school and same thing for the library, for the North Hadley Fire Station and for the Senior Center. It really does take an entire community. And now our building is going to be open. So we completed the building in September of 2020 and we have been able to maintain curbside pickup of materials despite the pandemic and our construction. 
We've also retained all of our highly skilled staff uh, throughout the year, even with this additional work. Um, in February, we did open our large and small public meeting rooms for individuals to book. So if you are looking for a place to work from home, uh, or if you have want to have a meeting with one or two other people, look to our website, you can book that. Um, that's one of the things that we're really excited to bring to the community. These are um, off hours, uh, rooms that are available even when we are not open. This is one of the huge uh, community selling points for the library. And recently we just began browsing. You can make an appointment for a half an hour of browsing, come see the new library. We're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on the hour, uh, go to the website and you can book an appointment. Some of the things that we are looking forward to, a lot of hard work still ahead of us. Uh, we are a LEED certified building. And as such, we qualified for an additional $100,000 grant from the MBLC, which will allow us to pursue a solar array. We design with sustainability in mind. And uh, with that, we have all, all of our systems are really running on electricity. So we're hoping that the solar array will uh, offset a lot of that cost for the community. Uh, we've done a lot of private fundraising for that. In addition to that grant, we have raised over $30,000 thanks to generous members of the community, both business and individuals. Uh, our capital campaign has raised over $300,000 towards the project, and we will continue to do so in the future. Uh, in addition to the solar array, I'm also looking forward to helping the library expand on our services. We have new teen room, a new preschool story room, a lot of opportunities for new programming for the entire community. Uh, I will also be assisting with um, continued fundraising efforts, grant writing, et cetera. I hope you will consider casting your vote for me at our election on April 13th. Thank you. Next up, we have Jessica Kim. Hi. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right, hello. And thank you to the Hadley Mothers Club for sponsoring this forum. Uh, my name is Jessica Kim and I'm seeking your vote for library trustee. My family and I have been regular users of the Goodwin since we moved to Hadley 12 years ago. Uh, we've borrowed books, uh, videos, we've attended programs, and we often um, just popped into the library to catch up with friends and neighbors. Uh, when the new library became a possibility, I became more involved as a volunteer for the campaign, uh, and then as a member of the Library Building Sustainability Subcommittee. I'm trained as a librarian, uh, and I have worked in public school and college libraries, uh, in, in all sorts of roles. Um, and I also served on the library board for the town of Chapel Hill, North Carolina when I was a graduate student. I believe strongly in the power of public libraries as community resources. They provide common space, professional guidance and intellectual and cultural materials and experiences. I am so excited to see what our community can do with our new open and accessible public space. I would be grateful to play a part in introducing the new public library to the community, setting inclusive policies, securing its energy sustainability through the solar panels that Allison just uh, spoke about, um, and supporting the essential work and creativity of our incredible town library staff. They have kept, the pub they have kept serving the public throughout a pandemic. I bring professional experience strong organizational and communication skills, and enthusiasm for a near future time when our public library can safely fill up with children, seniors, and other folks seeking social connection, reliable information, and cultural experiences. Please vote in the town election next week. And if you do, I would be so grateful for your vote and your confidence in me to represent the interests of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, so I'd like to just say one other thing that Hadley Mothers Club has been working behind the scenes this last year, providing um, needed items for the senior center. They have a brown bag program 
that they have items that they give uh, out to senior citizens. And um, we have been providing a brown bag of our own with well with needed items uh, such as little snacks, um, coveted toilet paper and paper towels, um, uh, personal hygiene items, PPE items, um, note card stamps, household items, just to name a few things. So Willis Club is working on this um, whole, all last year, um, we do one once a quarter, but we've also had some pop-up ones to help out the senior citizens. That's been one of our um, uh, things we've been doing because we couldn't have any in-person events. So um, without further ado, we, I'd like to introduce uh, Jane Nevin Smith as our select board member who is here to speak about a um, non-binding question that will be on the ballot. So go ahead, Jane. On the uh, town ballot this year will be a question, should the town move the annual town election to the third Tuesday in May after the annual town meeting? The select board felt it would be useful to get a feeling of the town about this question. The reasons for moving it are, it started as a savings of money. It costs about $4,000 a year to or $4,000 an election to hold an event. So if there should be a need to vote after town meeting on a debt exclusion, where you would have to have a special election, it could be combined with the annual town election and thereby save money. When the town warrant would be set up, the election dates and all would be listed there and would not need two separate notices. It would allow current elected officials to fulfill their terms through the town meeting and discuss articles on the warrant that they had championed instead of having new board members um, be there with little information. The other major feature is that there's always a larger turnout at town elections than there are for special elections so that more people from the town would be having a say about what the town was actually doing. There are a few things that people don't like about this. And the first is it's a change of habit. Nobody likes change. But um, Jessica has solicited information from other town clerks and she got responses from 23 other towns that have changed their calendars to put the voting after their town annual meetings they all felt it worked better for their towns. Another objection for the first year, if this happens, would be that the elected officials would have to serve an additional month. And lastly, a late spring election might interfere with vacations. However, Jessica assures everyone absentee ballots would be available. So this will be a non-binding um, vote on the warrant. Thank you. On the town, on the ballot. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. We appreciate that because uh, people reading it may not understand it when they're there, but that's a good explanation of, of why uh, they uh, that this has been put on the ballot. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Um, so um, just another uh, quick note. Just wanted to, um, you know, everybody still, um, I know last year at this time, it was, it was quite fast and furious and it was quite um, an upsetting time for a lot of folks with the, the pandemic and um, everything uh, being shut down. But we just still wanted everybody to make sure that, you know, check on their neighbors. Um, you know, we're all this together. We're gonna get through this together. You know, everybody, um, please, you know, keep uh, wearing your mask, social distance and, um, you know, just be careful of um, everyone. And again, check on everybody and um, we'll get through this quickly and we'll be together again soon. Um, so we have uh, one question that was submitted um, and it is for the select board candidates. And I think, yep, here we come up. Um, Joyce and Amy. And um, so uh, the question is, 
And um, so uh, the question is for Park and Rec programs uh, question, for age zero to 65 in our community struggling with COVID shutdowns and negative impacts. Could, could you repeat that again? Yes. Will you support park and rec programs for age zero through 55 in our community struggling with COVID shutdowns negative impact? Certainly, if our um, park and rec are doing programs that are safe and we're doing things that are going to be uh, rules for, from the CDC and from our Board of Health, then I think that's important for us to continue and to be able to expand and get people out in the, you know, in the atmospheres that they can. Um, we're starting to open up in so many different areas with, with the COVID that um, I feel like people are ready to do the right thing. I think Hadley has really done well um, between the schools and the town hall, our emergency management, the board of health, uh, our, our businesses, everybody is trying to do what is good for our public. And I think in being able to expand our park and rec and getting kids out in a safe atmosphere, I certainly am willing to support these things because I think it's important. I think it's important for your overall good well-being, uh, no matter what age you are, to be able to get out and uh, enjoy some of the things that you that you normally do. And coming into the summer makes it a lot easier. Uh, with open space, being outside, fresh air, good ventilation. Um, certainly uh, these are the good things that we look for in doing programs. Uh, so I certainly would support the Park and Rec as long as all of these things are in place. So um, I wish them well if that's what they're going to do. And certainly I'll support these things. I wish them well if that's what they're going to do. And certainly I'll support these things. Thanks, Joyce. All right, and same question for stress. I was still in the waiting room, so I actually didn't hear the question. <laughs> Hold on one second, Amy. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think. Are we good to go? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, Amy, do you want me to read the question again? Yeah, I was still in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. It is, will you support parks and, park and rec programs for age zero through 55 in our community struggling with COVID shutdowns, negative impact? Absolutely. That's, I can't believe that's a question. <laughs> um, absolutely. I think it's extremely important for our community to still be able to interact with each other um, in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, last year when I, I didn't win the election, I did not stop wanting to be involved in the community and enriching children's lives. Um, I actually started a 4-H club last year. Um, we started it back in, in November and, um, we've been going on since then. It's a livestock and a, um, animal science club. Um, I think that, you know, socializing interaction is, I mean, while 4-H is only for you know, ages um, six through 18, uh, I think socializing is important at any age. Um, so I think it's extremely important for our community. I think the very fabric of Hadley and community as a whole is its people. 
Um, so having events and availability for um, people to interact with each other, to attend events, um, I think it's absolutely important. Um, you know, of course, following whatever COVID rules are now, um, social distancing, masks, um, whatever the CDC recommends, but um, mostly whatever the um, health board suggests. However, I think it's extremely important to be in person, to be personable, and to make it, um, you know, interactive and interpersonal with people, um, not just through Zoom, because I think that's a little impersonal. Um, so I know that's how our 4-H club is right now. We can only do it through Zoom. Um, and we actually ended up losing kids because of that. So um, as much as in-person you can be, I absolutely support and I absolutely recommend it. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to thank all the candidates that were on tonight. Um, and I just wanted to uh, remind all the voters in Hadley that the election will be held at the Hadley Senior Center on April 13th from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also, I'd like to thank um, Hadley Mothers Club members, Barbara Pliska and Pe Peg Jekanowski. This event would not be possible without them. We would also like to thank the town of Hadley, especially Jennifer. Without your help, this would not happen. Um, John Harrison at Hadley Media for his behind the scenes uh, running this event and having him, um, he will uh, show it a lot on uh, channel 192 up until the election. So if people didn't get a chance to watch tonight, they can certainly watch um, another time on Hadley Media. And um, we appreciate your time and please go and vote. Thank you. Have a good night.